we're making bread. I'm doing 14 days of bread. We're gonna make sourdough, whole wheat, rolls, brioche, dinner rolls. It's, just, it's gonna be a good time. So for 14 days, I will be here with you. And we are gonna make bread. And I believe if you can make bread, you can feed your family for a lifetime. So let's jump into the video. All right, so what you see here is basic supplies needed for making bread. I have yeast, salt, some sunflower seeds, a bowl, all-purpose flour, whole wheat flour. I also have some walnuts right here left over and then just a measuring cup and we'll get some water and stuff like that later. But the basic reason behind this recipe is, you know, we're in a time where we have limited resources and it's very important that you're still able to be self-sufficient and feed yourself and your family. So let's get started. Now this is not a recipe that I wrote. This is just something that I found on Pinterest and it had good bones to it. So I feel like we can use this and make something good. So first we're starting off with three and a half cups of whole wheat flour. I would love to have this recipe been measured out in grams just for a more precise recipe, but it's not. So two and a half cups of all purpose unbleached flour. I also want to put about a third of a cup of walnuts and a third of a cup of sunflower seeds. So I'm going to do, but I want to do my yeast first because I want to have a barrier to separate the yeast from the salt. So we're going to do one and a half, one and a half teaspoons of yeast. I'm using active dry yeast. I want to give that a good mix. Just like that. And then you're also going to do two and a half teaspoons of kosher salt. It's so hard for me to read these. It's like grams are so much easier. So grab a gram scale because we're going to be doing 14 days of bread. So you can order one Hopefully you have one already, so you don't have to go out. But put the grand scale in the kitchen, so you'll get really precise bread. Now let's go ahead and get that one third cup of sunflower seeds. I'm making a wheat bread, and then I'm adding some inclusion. So we got the sunflower seeds. This is the one that I have out of the dry section. Pour that in. I didn't chop it up too much, you know, some big, some small. Just put it in the bag. Just put it in your... For your water, you want to make sure that it's at least lukewarm. A little warmer than room temperature. So, I'll get the direct exact temperature for you just a second so you're gonna need three and a half cups of water let's get the temperature on that water so you'll know I'm at 89 from my water Need three and a half cups so I'm just gonna pour it into this pitcher here and then I'll pour it into my bowl. And 89 again. Perfect. Three and a half cups. So kind of just want to make a well and just let it kind of like overflow out of the well. Take a spatula 
and just kind of mix it just to its shaggy. It's not going to be like a perfect incorporation, but just enough. For the yeast to be touched and activated by the water. I use this recipe also because it doesn't require a mixer. You could just do it by hand. Because I know not everybody has a mixer. Make sure you get to the bottom because you'll have some flour at the bottom. And this is what we have right now. Now you want to cover this with a, now you want to cover this with plastic wrap. A cheap plastic wrap. Hopefully I have enough left for this. Sharpie, and you want to write it's 9 48 p.m. We're gonna let this go for 12 hours, and this is whole wheat. So, whole wheat, and put that right there, and then we're gonna let this sit for 12 hours. So, I'll be back in 12 hours, and then we are back. We have our whole wheat that has been rising mine has actually been rising for 14 hours you can go up to 18 but you don't want to go past 18 so 12 to 18 hours got your dutch oven this is a well seasoned old beat up dutch oven that i have and um i'm gonna preheat my oven to 450 and i'm putting this in the oven while it preheats to 450 let's do that first so like I said Dutch oven without parchment right now to 450 in the oven you know what scratch that I think we should put our parchment paper inside of it put your parchment inside of it get your top whole thing is going in the oven while it preheats to 450. Flour, flour, flour. Just like that. That's it. Simple. I have some rolled oats right here. About a third of a cup rolled oats. Put those off to the side because we're going to top our bread in it. I'm going to put all the ingredients that you'll need, but and all the supplies but this is a scraper so this is what I'm gonna use to get it out the bowl trying not to break up the gluten too much by pulling it and stretching it so I'm using a scraper you're probably wondering what is this monstrosity this is starter from when we make sourdough I'm gonna show you how to make starter maybe I'll show you today all right be back the oven just beeped to let me know it's preheated right so just in case you're wondering why we preheated the Dutch oven, you preheat your Dutch oven so that you, when you put your dough inside and when you remove it when it's cooked into bread, so that it doesn't stick. But I still put parchment paper just as like a safety net just in case. Okay. 
but that's just me. But yes, if you don't have parchment paper, preheating your Dutch oven in the oven to 450 is enough. So this is how it looks right now. Give you a close up. This is how everything looks. Then you're this is actually no knead. It's a no knead bread, so you won't have to knead it and all that stuff. You're just gonna roll it out to your flour surface and shape it into a ball. Just like that. Try to get out as much as you can. All this beautiful goodness. <clears throat> I'm putting my rolled oats on top. Hopefully you can see. Try to do it with one hand. Get a nice coating of the rolled oats. Just like you would get at a patisserie, a bakery, just like that. Don't be stingy with the oats. Okay. Back. My battery is going to die, so I have to kind of speed through this part. So make sure you flour your hands really good, or it will stick to your hands. So you're just shaping it into a ball, just like that. And make sure your surface is also floured so that it does not stick to it. Okay. Press your press your yes, baby. I'll make a big cookie. <laughs> press your oats into it, just like that, lightly. Okay. You see how I have enough flour, right? So I can move this. Your hand flour it too, just like that. It should be able to move. That's all I did, you guys. Shape it into a ball. Press some oats onto it. And then now, I'm going to put this into my Dutch oven and bake for 30 minutes with the top on. And then after 30 minutes, I'm going to bake it for 15 more minutes with the top off. Okay? Talking fast because the camera's going to die. Let me give you a close-up. That's how it looks. All right, be back. Okay, you guys, here's my super hot Dutch oven right here, 450 degrees preheated. Woo! Let me take off my lid. That is going to be hot. Putting that off to the side. You see the smoke came on out. Now, get your dough. Put it right inside. Just like that. I'm gonna show you what I did. Let's go. That's how it is right now. Just like that. Now I'm gonna put the lid on, bake it for 30 minutes with the lid on. After 30 minutes, take your lid off, bake for 15 minutes without the lid. Taking off my lid. Woo, it's beautiful. Okay, time has come. No, you don't see me, but I'm getting my bread. I'm getting my bread. <laughs> okay. All right. Oof. It's beautiful. Mm -mm. Got some color on it. Got some crunch. Oh, yeah. This is what you want. Look at that. Look at that. Don't worry. I'm going to give you a close-up. We're going to do a close-up. Here's my close-up. Isn't that beautiful, you guys? Okay, let's take it out so that um, it doesn't continue to cook at the bottom. Okay. I'm gonna wash my hands real quick and we're gonna take it out. See, when you preheat it, you could just take it right out, but I, it's kinda hard. Okay, so just kind of let it fall Ooh. and work fast. Ooh. <laughs> that was 
that was an event. Okay, let's get this hot, hot, hot Dutch oven out of the way. Okay. So, here's our beautiful, delicious bread. Let me zoom in. I reuse my parchment, don't judge me. But it's hot, but I want to give you a close up. See how beautiful that is? My goodness. Okay, so we're going to let this cool a bit, and then we're going to cut it, get some butter, and eat it. That's what you want to hear. You want it to be, to sound solid. You want to have like a little echo to it. Just look how beautiful that is. All right, you guys. I'll be back in a bit once it cools so we can uh, we can taste it. Okay, you guys. We have let this bread cool enough. I can't wait any longer. Mm, I want to eat mine with some tuna so bad. Got some smart balance right there. So let's cut into it. Ah! Okay, I'm going to cut it from here. You know, what am I doing? Why am I setting it weird? Okay. Get you a serrated knife when you cut it. Oh, it's beautiful. Oh my God, oh my God. Look at that. You see the walnuts? Steam's still coming off of it. It's a beautiful piece of bread, you guys. Just like one that you would buy. Look at that. Perfect. Mm -mm -mm. Okay, I want to do another slice. Because like I said, I'm making some tuna with mine. Look at that beautiful bread. Are you kidding me? That's beautiful. You can make this too, you guys. Alright, you guys. Well, that's the end of the video for now. If I decide to come back with tuna, I will. But uh, you know what I can do? And get some butter. Get some butter and spread a little bit on here for you. Spread a little love on there <laughs> for you. Put some jam on this. Mm-hmm. Yes, ma'am. All right. I'll be back. Maybe. If not, you know I've eaten my bread. Let's see. Mm. -hmm. Mm. Perfect. Mm-hmm. All right, y'all. Bye.